There's scientific evidence which I'm going to show you in this video that will make you pretty shocked about these weight loss drugs like Azempic and Manjaro and what they're doing to your body. They destroy your metabolic health. And I know that's hard to believe for some of you because they're all over the place and you think, well, if they're that popular, they can't be harmful. But I'm not just going to show you scientific evidence. I'm also going to show you a real life case of this happening. And I'm also going to explain why you don't hear about it much from the companies that sell these drugs. And before you think it, I don't have some kind of alternative drug or treatment to sell you either. I advocate for losing excess weight with methods that are free and obvious like diet and nutrition. So with scientific evidence, real life cases and business considerations all contributing to the problems these drugs cause and their popularity, let's get straight into it. Here's an important paper to look at which will come on screen now. So this paper considers the, the issues of muscle loss from these drugs. Uh, by the way, these drugs are classed as GLP-1s. So when you see that terminology in papers, they're referring to Azempic, Manjaro, Wegovi, et cetera, et cetera. Now for copyright reasons, I can't show you the entire actual paper here, uh, but I can show you the portion of it that's publicly viewable. If you're someone that gets access to papers, you can use what's on screen now to go and read the whole thing. I'll leave links to the papers shown in this video in the description too. In essence, they reported that taking these drugs created 25% to 39% of the total weight lost over 36 to 72 weeks. If you need me to spell it out, that is absolutely ludicrous. There is absolutely no way on earth that that's healthy whatsoever. People may say, oh, but you're at lower risk of this or that. Yeah, but now you're at higher risk of other things. So what's the point of swapping one problem for another? And if you think muscle loss isn't that important, think again. Here's a paper that will change the way you think about your health for the rest of your life. This paper shows you the link between your body's ability to survive and have a strong immune system, age well, fight disease in general, etc., and the mitochondria you have. And guess what? Skeletal muscle is one of the largest stores of mitochondria in the body. So if you lose 25% to 39% as muscle in that weight loss, you're losing a seriously dangerous amount of mitochondria. And it's the mitochondria that literally keep us alive and able to age as well as possible. This paper is pretty complex for the general public, but it's there for those who are willing to put the effort in to understand it. And just for more evidence, here's another paper uh, that describes a specific case of muscle loss also where the patient lost literally 10 pounds of skeletal muscle. So if people say to you that these drugs are great because they reduce the risk of diabetes, you know, ask those same people what you're at increased risk of when you lose significant amounts of skeletal muscle. Then you should realize they have absolutely no clue what they're talking about. Now let's take a look at bone loss on these drugs too. And before I show you a paper on this for some scientific evidence, let me explain something to you. When we lose muscle, it means the loading that goes through bones reduces and reduced loading leads to bones withering away. It's exactly the same as when we lose teeth in our jaw. That part of the jaw you know, experiences reduced loading, so it thins out when we lose a tooth there. That's why people that have lost all their teeth have, have much thinner jaws. So that's one reason you would expect bone loss on these drugs. Another is much more shocking. Think about what I'm about to say very carefully. Rewatch if you need. When in a human being's life do you find fat mass and fat free or lean mass all reducing together during starvation? That's it. There's no other time as far as this context is concerned. That's why people that starve themselves to lose weight put all the weight back on, you know, when they get back to normal because they can't carry on starving anymore. So now you should start to draw some conclusions about how these drugs work. The tagline that's told to us clinicians by reps when they, they come and visit our clinics is that you know, they work by slowing the rate of gastric emptying. Yeah, no shit. Because they turn your stomach to stone so the food just sits there instead of passing through, which is why people feel sick. These drugs 
paralyze your digestive tract. And if you don't believe me, I'll leave a link in the description below to see the biochemistry of this for yourself. And if you think I'm wrong on that, watch the video and please comment below saying exactly which part of the biochemistry is incorrect, factually incorrect. If the food can't be passed through, then the body thinks it needs to vomit. And because the food sat there for ages, you don't eat. And because you don't eat, you just wear away. So your body has to get what it needs from somewhere else, which is why it'll break itself down, including muscle and bone. Here's a paper to show the bone loss on screen right now. This paper was a placebo-controlled double-blind study. It's not perfect in terms of control, but it shows some serious findings that we need to talk about. It found an increase in bone resorption markers, markers like uh, beta-CTX in patients using GLP-1 drugs. In other words, it saw exactly what you would predict if you made someone's food not move through their digestive system to the point where they stop eating and go into what's essentially metabolic starvation of sorts. Now I'm going to go one further. People say, you know, papers are all well and good, but what about real patients? Or if you show real patients, people say, oh, but there's no evidence, you know, which makes absolutely no sense at all because evidence comes from real life cases. Uh, but uh, to that end, I'm gonna play a video here, uh, or my editing team is, uh, of someone that experienced a bone loss while taking GLP-1 drugs. Now, if you think, oh, well, that's only one person, well, the reason is that it's a YouTube video. I'm not gonna sit here and go through 500 individual cases. You know? And please watch it because I wouldn't want anyone to experience what this girl is going through in this video. I just left the doctor's office. I went to get a checkup because I've been off of Ozempic for two months now and I just wanted to see if my body was in better condition, if there were any permanent damages. Kind of in shock right now because I wasn't expecting this, but um, I guess Ozempic can cause bone density loss and I didn't think that that would happen to me because I was only on it for a year, um, but I have significant bone loss. I have osteoporosis and um, osteopenia, so that I don't know, there's like several of them that I have. I wasn't expecting that, but that's what happens if you, uh, if you use Ozempic uh, for weight loss and you lose too much weight. Now that you've seen that, I'll say this one more time. If someone tells you that these drugs are great because they reduce the risk of things like diabetes, then say back to them, why is reducing that risk while simultaneously increasing the risk of things that come with muscle and bone loss? It's a perfectly reasonable question to ask. And if someone tells you that they are treating diabetes with these drugs, they are absolutely out of their depth. Treating a condition means addressing its root cause. The root cause of diabetes is not lack of GLP-1 drugs. The root cause of obesity is not lack of GLP-1 drugs. So you are completely deluded if you think you are treating diabetes or obesity with GLP-1 drugs. If the root cause of something is not lack of drugs, but you get that patient on drugs, then you are just maintaining drug use. That's all. You haven't treated anything. And frankly, if you know the information in the scientific evidence I've shown here and the real life case history, but you still choose to treat these things with these awful drugs that don't address the root cause in any way whatsoever, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And I'm going to touch on a final point now, which is, well, if they're so bad, why are they used everywhere? Firstly, they are the highest grossing drugs in the world right now, and if not, one of the highest grossing. Something that makes that much money will, surprise, surprise, always be made to look good from the companies that make them. The evidence against them will never ever come from the manufacturers. They'll be from independent groups that are much, much smaller, or from case studies like that shown in this video that build up over time. The exact same thing happened with things like smoking and cigarettes. I wonder if that's why it's been reported in the press now, like you can see in articles like this, that there have been over 1,800 lawsuits against the manufacturers of these drugs because of the severe consequences they've had for the people that use them. And the worst thing is, these manufacturers 
will probably make billions and billions of these drugs. They'll take lawsuits into account because the lawsuits may only be in the millions. So it's still profitable to make them and pay the lawsuits. There has literally never ever been a weight loss drug in history that wasn't taken off the market after its release due to safety concerns. I wonder if it's something to do with the fact that obesity isn't caused by lack of drugs and it's instead caused by what you put in your mouth. Or maybe I'm just being stupid. What do I know, eh? And if you want to understand how these drugs work in terms of how they kill your intestines and paralyze them, I'll leave a link in the description below to a video where I explain the exact biochemistry of how that happens. Oh, by the way, everything I show in that video uh, where I explain the way they work, which is by killing and paralyzing your intestines, is now being proven true by the lawsuits which you can find happening against the manufacturers. So for those of you thinking about going on these drugs, if you want to lose more weight than the drugs will let you, because your body won't let you wear yourself away to infinity, which is why weight loss reaches a plateau on these drugs, then I'll leave some testimonials from my actual patients on screen now showing you it's possible. These are patients in my one-to-one -one supervision group, which I'll link below as well as to my school group where I teach things like you know, the science in this video uh, multiple times a week with scientific papers and real life clinical experience. However, you can do this by yourself and without me though. I'll link to a video I made about weight or fat loss in the description below um, so you can see the principles um, of how to do it properly. Some people will say that all weight loss leads to some lean mass loss in muscle and bone. Frankly, that's a load of rubbish. None of my patients lose muscle or bone mass, and I know that because some of them get DEXA scans to show these things through their entire journey. In fact, many of them gain muscle mass at the same time. Now, just as a side note for this video, by the way, um, the papers I've mentioned in this video, which I have here, um, they're not 100% perfect because no paper is when it comes to tracking patients. But I've included them because there's enough info in them to realize that we need to really question the use of these drugs. And I also need to state for the record that I believe there may be certain extreme situations where the drugs may be appropriate, such as when someone is so obese, it becomes life threatening. In circumstances like that, you know, staying alive with the risk of these drugs could be clinically judged to be better than dying of obesity. But outside of extreme situations like this, I think, there is no place for them whatsoever. I, I've worked with patients you know, to lose hundreds of pounds of body weight, reverse diabetes and come off all medication without using a single drug. This is because of addressing root cause instead of hooking people on drugs for the profit of the pharmaceutical industry. And I'm not special in any way. I'm not unique in any way. I'm not the only one doing this. Many people are. I would highly recommend watching Professor Bart Kay's channel if you want to look into the scientific aspect of metabolic health. I'll link him in the description below. And you know what? If any of you think these drugs are safe or are treating conditions in any way, I'd love to watch you defend yourself in a debate against him. Uh, I'll also link in the description below to an interview I did on my podcast with Richard Smith. This guy was clinically obese with the associated conditions that are also seen alongside obesity. And without any drugs whatsoever, he not only lost the obesity and the associated conditions, he in fact went on to simultaneously become European bodybuilding champion by following the exact same dietary principles that all my patients follow.